In 2010, at the tail end of a worldwide depression that sees Lamborghini sales drop 45%, the brand decides it's time to replace an icon. It's creating something which is state of the art and pressure maybe, but a lot of expectation. My briefing to the team in general four or five years ago was very easy. But turning it into reality is hard because it must equal the Gallardo's success. We developed a car which has to have an outlook of almost another decade, so you have to think forward, and this is one of the most difficult things. To devise a revolutionary machine, the Lamborghini team focuses on three levels of performance. There are three points which are key. One is acceleration, the other one is top speed, and then handling. In the past, number one was always top speed. For decades, top speed was a selective club. Only a few machines could crack 320 kilometers per hour. Lamborghini was one of the few. Accelerating and having the easiness in the corners. And this is done with the power to weight ratio. Finding that balance is tricky when you're a niche manufacturer. The challenge for a small manufacturer is the amount of money and the brains you put in place. The brand not only banks on its heritage, but also its unique Italian design aesthetic. The people which are living here, they have a certain attitude. And Italians, they are known for style. I think that Italy, it's one of the few one which is creating those type of cars. The process of designing the Gallardo replacement starts with a basic set of rules. We try to give simple rules uh, to the designers, which the first one is that the design has always to be very different, but you know that it can't be anything else than a Lamborghini. The second thing is a form always follows function. So there is no things which are pimped up or made beautiful just to show something which is not functional. The third one, and our inspiration is always coming from the aeronautic industry. This car was inspired by the stealth fighter. They loved the angles and the purpose and the look of a F-22 and the B-1, and all these, these really neat airplanes. Filippo Perini is the man entrusted with bringing those stealth fighters for the road to life inside of the Lamborghini Centro Stile design studio. This room is the place where the new Lamborghini, the idea and the concept grow up here. Perini is one of the most outrageous automotive designers in the world. When we stop to work, we start to speak about cars, and this is uh, completely crazy. I think that uh, Lamborghini is uh, built by, by a man for challenge. No? It's something that we have to respect, and in the daily job, this is very tough. For Perini, that willingness to get better starts at an early age. He pens his first car at the age of two. This is my mother. I never take care about, about stuff like this, but my mother, yes. She was really attracted by my inclination to do sketches and to send sketches to the magazines. This is a magazine that was used to show artwork made by children, and I was one of them. And this is a Lamborghini. <laughs> In 2011, Parini improves on the past when he pens the Aventador, Lamborghini's newest flagship supercar. You can see a lot now in aeronautics that there are uh, many planes that are not so soft. First of all, because they have to be stealth. The styling echoes the lines of the legendary Countach, Diablo, and Murcielago, but also radically pushes the brand into a new direction. Every bit of Italian design that's successful has a little bit of kitsch in it, too. It's a little bit too far. If you look at modern Lamborghinis, you see it's probably one step too far. But isn't that the whole point of these cars? The design we are building is driven by the silhouette. It's, uh, this, this line is uh, in the middle. In the Huracan is a single one. It's monobody. My guys, my designers, the engineers, they want to do better. They want to at least you know, be a bit above what the others have done. The process starts with an internal design competition. When we do a competition for a new product, we have at least two main goals. One is to do a beautiful car, and the second is to be the people that are winning the, the, the contest. It's always very important to be present in, the, in, in this game and to be winner. That contest 
could very well determine the survival of the brand. It was very important for them to really get this car right. When you're pushing the boundaries of contemporary design, getting the car right means standing up for your vision. Probably the beauty of the design job is, let me say, 10% of the game. The rest, 90%, is to save what you've done in the beginning of the project. Designing for the future keeps the brand relevant. At the end, you cannot follow the trend of the market. Otherwise, you cannot be a winner. That future unfolds in a very 21st century way, completely digital. In a land of hallowed artisans, Lamborghini no longer uses clay to design their cars. It's a very traditional business to design a car. You sketch it, maybe these days you do some computer renderings, but you build a clay model and you shape it by hand and you really make this so you can stand back and look at it. Lamborghini doesn't do this anymore. They design the entire car on a computer. It's very, very normal for me now to judge a new design in a monitor of 21 inches. It doesn't matter. And after we print the model, it doesn't matter the scale. It's an incredible process, and it gives them a lot of freedom to make little changes, and they can do it immediately. This is the process, because it's much more lean. It's much more driven by desire. Behind the, uh, a monitor, there, are, there is always a designer. If, if you don't switch on a computer, it's doing nothing. Uh, this process is driven by the brain of a man. The machine is not only made by man, but lusted after, too. The sex appeal comes from different, no, we cannot say, it's porn. <laughs> it's not only sex, it's beautiful. That beauty starts inside one of the most revered supercar factories in the world. Antagata is the hometown of Lamborghini, and for us it's special because the brand needs roots. Arriving at the Lamborghini factory for the first time is really a neat experience. You're driving and you're passing all these farms and there's nothing, and then you come into this little town, and then here's the Lamborghini factory. And if you get back into the factory itself, it's still the factory that it was 60 years ago. It's still the same building. They've added more buildings, but it's still there. The factory is located in the heart of Italy's Emilia-Romagna region, otherwise known to automotive fans as La Terra di Motori. Emilia-Romagna, it's called also La Terra dei Motori, so it's something that a lot of super sports car brands are here. In this area, there is a kind of uh, Bermuda Triangle of performances. If you think about Ducati, Ferrari, Pagani, there is a, a concentration of uh, needing horsepower. I don't know why there are uh, so many companies, so many car designers, uh, so many car fans. I have some friends here that they cannot speak about normal... Uh, they are only speaking about car. That speed comes together on hallowed supercar ground. Today's Lamborghinis are assembled in the very same building that Ferruccio used in the 1960s. It's been heavily modernized. It's clean and well lit and spacious. It's not, you know, a little dusty old shop anymore. It's a fully modern factory. That factory 20 years ago didn't look as organized as it does now. It was wires everywhere, people tripping over stuff, fighting, throwing cigarettes and espresso at each other. I mean, you can imagine it was just nuts. The man responsible for Lamborghini's modern factory is Ranieri Nicoli. He's the director of production at Lamborghini. I'm in charge of all the things you are seeing here, so all the assemble of the car and also of the logistics of the parts and all the assemble the car in Lamborghini. It's Ranieri's job to get the factory ready for Huracan assembly. It's really a challenge. When a new car is born, it's, uh, it's really something complicated because you have to imagine that a car is made by something like 2,000 parts. All this activity in, uh, all together is really complicated. Coordinating all those parts takes place on 22 stations that produce just 13 cars per day. We are at the starting point of our assembly line, composed by 22 stations. In each station, we are starting to assemble some parts in order to start from naked cars. All 22 stations are run by artisanal mechanics. Craftsmanship is the big word in our factory. We have two assembly lines, and these lines are going slower than a highly automated factory. It's a craftsman's approach to car building, based on perfection. We have more people doing the assembly, and this is craftsmanship, but also the love of the people. 
Typically, the line moves every 34 minutes. This is a combination between craftsmanship, but also technology. The car has to be unique for each customer. That quality has a truly national identity. Lamborghinis for Italy means cars, means passion, means speed. And this is something that for Italian guys, the best place. Building an Huracan starts with the machine's body entering the line. So basically here we are starting to assemble the new Lamborghini Huracan. This is the first station. Bodies are painted off-site in one of 19 colors and arrive ready to hit the ground running. Only at Lamborghini, the onus isn't on speed, but speciality. It's not an assembly line running through as quickly as they can either. There's only a small number of workstations. It will take months to ramp up production on the new Huracan, a small price to pay when you're betting your brand on a platform that needs to survive for a decade. We are in the starting phase of production of the, of the Huracan, so the, our production is quite low because we are starting to produce the first car. After the, you develop a car, then you have all the parts which are coming together until it finally fits with the puzzle and with the quality we want. And then we ramp up. High-speed manufacturing at Lamborghini still isn't all that fast. An Italian factory is kind of unique because the Italian cars that you think of are your supercars, are your Ferraris and Lamborghinis. When you get to cars like that, they're being built low volume. It's a slower process. It will take two days to build an Huracan once the factory hits full production. You know, an Italian car factory, these people are passionate. They want to be there. They are true believers in the brand. They really are passionate about the product. Like the design team foregoing clay, Lamborghini tests the process of putting the Huracan together with a pre-production series of machines. So we are doing this job first with the electronic file. We try to figure out how we can assemble the parts. And in the same time, we try to design the line in order to say, OK, in this station, we will assemble this part. In the other station, we will assemble the other part, because we can't assemble all the parts uh, in, uh, without the right sequence. Finding the correct installation sequence is just one dimension. Ergonomics and tooling concerns are important, too. Correct means ergonomic, so the worker doesn't have uh, feel the effort to do this all day, and also possible, so all the tooling we need, screw or other thing, has to fit in, and not to have clash in order to assemble the parts. All the planning in the world still requires putting it into practice. So all these activities done before, and let's say some months before the start of production. Pre-production starts by checking the quality of the parts arriving at the factory. We have to check together all the parts coming from these 200 and more suppliers all over the world in this phase. Those parts are sorted in various areas of the factory and then placed on carts that head directly to the line. We have 22 stations and we have to assemble 2,000 parts. You can imagine how many parts per station we should manage. And all the parts are coming with boxes. So every worker in each station has only the parts they need to assemble for one car. They don't have to choose, they don't have to find the right boxes. He receives some trolley like this, in a way, for example, this is a part, which is basically already with support old, with the pictures. Some of those parts arrive at the early stations on the line, where the Orokan's hybrid chassis starts to take shape. We are using not only aluminium, but also carbon fiber. And we are using carbon fiber where we need more strength. The carbon fiber has a unique combination between uh, light, weight, and strength. So we were using, in an intelligent way, the carbon fiber when we need more strength for the car. Carbon fiber really is Lamborghini's specialty. It's what they've really hung their hat on. It's a cutting-edge material for a very high-tech machine that needs to succeed for Lamborghini to stay alive. <laughs>